Hey guys, in this video I'm going to take a fresh look at using a virtual height field mesh to add uh, displacement to your landscape in Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so I'm going to get started here in a new third person template project. And uh, what I'll do first is create a, a new landscape. Um, and I'll just make a small one here, let's say 15 by 15, uh, click create. And maybe I'll just make a handful of little uh, hills here just randomly. Okay, and uh, what I want to do is I'm going to create a landscape material. I'm going to go back to select mode here and uh, to create a landscape material I'm going to use one material from uh, Quixel Bridge. So I'll get that one first here, add Quixel content. I'll just grab one that I've already downloaded here. Maybe that's rocky soil. Okay, and for the second uh, material layer, I'm going to import uh, another material that I have. Uh, this is just mossy, rocky ground. And uh, this material has the typical five files that you might be used to seeing uh, with a PBR material. You've got your albedo, the AO, the roughness, normal, and displacement. Uh, versus the Megascans download, uh, it has just three files here for textures. It has the uh, base color the normal, and then a packed map that has the occlusion, the roughness, and displacement all in one uh, texture. It's in the red, green, and blue channels. All right, so uh, we'll show you how to make that material here first. I'll just right click, uh, make a new material, M underscore landscape. Uh, I'm not gonna make a material instance or anything. I'm just gonna make this master material for now. Uh, so first I'll set this to uh, use material attributes. And uh, I'll right click, and I wanna make a landscape layer blend and I'm just going to make a two layer blend for now uh, and we'll use that uh, rocky soil and the mossy rocky ground. All right and so for both of those I'm going to need to use a make material attributes node and uh, the results will plug into these pins here. Let's duplicate that here and uh, I'll import the files that I need here. So uh, for the mossy rocky ground, it's gonna be these five. And uh, for the rocky soil, it's these three. All right, and I'll just plug everything in here. All right, so I plugged in everything here except for the displacement, which is the blue channel from this one and our uh, regular displacement map down here. I'm just gonna come back to those in a second. What I'm gonna do here is at the end of the layer blend, uh, what I wanna do is first drive that into the material node. And also I'm gonna uh, break the material attributes here. And I'm gonna right click and say runtime virtual texture output. And we wanna output into the virtual texture output uh, the base color, the roughness, and the normal as well as the world height. And that's where we're gonna add our displacement. Uh, and so what I wanna do is we need to get the height of our landscape at the given point. Uh, you know, if it's on a hill or a valley or if it's you know flat level ground, whatever it is, we need to find that height to start with so we can add the displacement. So I'm gonna get the world position node. And uh, I, I'm gonna use a mask here. I don't wanna use the entire position vector. I just want the height value. So I'm gonna use a component mask and uh, we're gonna use B, blue, for the mask, uh, which is equivalent to Z. So instead of RGB, it's X, Y, Z. Uh, so I'm just gonna select a blue mask here. That's gonna give us the height value from our landscape. And I wanna add in our displacement. Uh, and so previously, there was a world displacement, uh, or a, uh, sorry, a displacement node that you could use on the material attributes node here. Uh, but it's since been removed. And so uh, what I've done now is basically I'm just going to borrow one of these other pins uh, because I'm not using any of these other pins anyway. Uh, I can just plug this displacement value into, let's say, specular. And down here I'll plug in my displacement map into specular. And now uh, the layer blend where I break these materials back apart, I have the blended value. I can just drag from specular here and I have my displacement values. Uh, so I'll drag from that and multiply so we can displace it by some amount that we control. Uh, so I'll just press one, uh, hold one on my keyboard and click. And we'll set that to maybe 25 or something to start with. 
Uh, and then so now I can add this to the world position height and the result is our world height with displacement. Okay, and, and so that's basically the setup here for the material for the virtual height field mesh. And of course you could have as many layers or as complicated of a landscape as you want. Uh, the back end all comes into a layer blend and this is where you need to set it up for the virtual height field mesh. All right, so I'll apply that and close that and we'll just draw some of the landscape here. Uh, so I'll select the landscape, uh, just select the main actor, go to uh, material here and we'll apply that landscape material. And I'll go to uh, landscape mode, paint, and here's our two layers. I just need to add a weight blended layer uh, to both of those, or build the weight blended layer. Uh, all right, and then now I can draw this uh, mossy rocky ground onto our uh, rocky soil. And uh, so what I'll do now is I'll just address um, the tiling here. So back in the landscape uh, material, uh, I'm just gonna add a landscape layer chords node and I can set the scale here to something like maybe five and we'll plug that into all the UV pins here. I'll just duplicate one down here and plug those in here. All right, and I'll apply that and close. There we go, that looks a lot better. All right, and so the next thing I wanna do here is I'm, I'm just gonna reposition the landscape. I'll select the main actor here and uh, we'll set the location to uh, just zero, 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 just to make things uh, easy here. And then I'll just select the floor from the uh, template here and delete that so it stops kind of glitching out there. Let me delete these walls so we can walk out of here as well. And uh, okay, and so I'm gonna go back to paint mode real quick here paint some of this mossy rocky ground in the area we can, we're going to uh, start in. And uh, we'll check it out how it looks so far. And uh, of course, it's very, very flat. So, you know, it doesn't really look like rocks. It looks like a picture of rocks on the floor. Uh, okay, so let's get started on the virtual height field mesh. The first thing that we need to do is go to edit and project settings. And I'm going to search here for virtual I'm going to enable virtual texture support. Uh, I'm not going to restart just yet. I'm going to go to edit plugins and uh, search for virtual and I'm going to put on the virtual height field mesh plugin. All right. Uh, now I'll go ahead and restart the engine. All right. And so back in the engine, uh, we'll start to set up the virtual height field mesh. And the first thing I'll do is right click in the content browser, go to textures, make a new runtime virtual texture. And I'm going to call this VHM underscore height. Uh, and I'll control D to duplicate that. I'm going to call this one VHM underscore material. And I'll open up the height texture and I'm going to set the virtual texture content to world height. Uh, and I'll close that. And uh, so what I want to do is to draw into these uh, virtual texture files, uh, textures, we need to make virtual texture volumes, runtime virtual texture volumes. Uh, so I'll just make those actors now. We'll add those in to the scene, to the world, runtime virtual texture volume. I'll just drag that in here. Uh, and I'm going to rename this one. I'm going to call it, uh, let's say, RVTV underscore. And I'll call this one uh, height and I'll set the virtual texture here to VHM height and I need to set the bounds and so uh, sometimes you can use the bounds align actor uh, function here so I could say select the landscape and click set bounds and we'll see if that works and uh, no so sometimes it's it's buggy for some reason I'm not sure why it just set it to 000 instead of the proper bounds um, so instead I'll just set it manually here we'll set the location to 000 and the scale for uh, this size of landscape, I need 12,500 by 12,500. And the height, however much height you need, I'm going to just put in like 2,000. All right. Um, so that's our first runtime virtual texture volume. And that's going to capture our world height and uh, record that into VHM underscore height. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just select this in the world outliner, control D to duplicate. And I'm going to rename this one to RVTV underscore material 
and I'll set the virtual texture for this one to VHM underscore material. All right, and uh, I'll just set the location back to zero, zero, zero here, and we've already got the correct scale. Uh, and so what I need to do next is indicate that this landscape actor should draw into those texture, uh, virtual textures. So I'll select the landscape, uh, select the main actor here, and in the details, I'm gonna search for virtual and draw in virtual textures. I need to add two elements here, uh, one for VHM height and one for VHM material. Okay, and uh, right away you can see here the results. Uh, it's filled up those textures with uh, a height map here representing where I drew on those hills and uh, the material where I drew the, uh, the, the different textures here. Uh, and so next what we'll do is create the actual virtual height field mesh actor. So I'll create that now and I'll drag that into the world here. And again, I need to set the uh, location to 0, 0, 0, and the scale to the same 12,500, 12,500 by 2,000. So everything's got to match. And uh, for the virtual texture, we'll select RVTV underscore height. And then I can click this build button here to build a min max texture. And I'll just accept this default save name and wait for this. Okay, so now that's done. Um, what I'll do here is I can take a look at the virtual height field mesh uh, that we've got so far here just by uh, selecting that actor and in the details here I'll find hidden and I'll just uncheck actor hidden in editor. So we can see the mesh here, uh, but it has no material applied uh, and that's because um, we need to apply our landscape material to this mesh as well, but I can't just apply the same master material for the landscape because there's no layer information for this mesh. So that's why we're creating this VHM uh, underscore material uh, for basically a top-down image of what we want to project onto that mesh. Uh, so all I need to do here is right click, make a new material, M underscore VHM. And for that one here, we need to sample, we'll say runtime virtual texture sample. And in the details here, I can say I want to sample VHM underscore material. And I'll plug in the base color and the roughness and the normal. All right, so I'll apply and close that. And now with the virtual height field mesh actor selected here, I'll set the material to M underscore VHM. And there we go. Uh, all right, so I'll press play here and check it out. And great, we have our displacement happening. Uh, but unfortunately, you can probably see already one of the major drawbacks with using a virtual height field mesh. And that is, uh, unfortunately, there is no collision. So this mesh is being generated on the GPU. Um, and so as far as I know currently, there's no support for detecting collision against the mesh so that we could place the, the character uh, feet properly or, and use this as uh, in the third person like this. Um, so currently limitation would be you want to use this in an area where there's not characters walking with their feet on the ground, um, which could be, you know, any number of uh, circumstances. Maybe uh, it's an area beyond a uh, fence line or beyond an area that the player can actually walk, but there's still some, some landscape to be uh, drawn there and you can use this in that kind of area for you know some free detail kind of thing. Uh, but you're not going to use this everywhere. You can use this maybe in a cinematic or a flyby situation where you're, you're kind of capturing an environment but not necessarily walking around in it. All right, so I'm going to wrap up the video here. Uh, basically covers it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.